You know, in the game show Golden Age in the 1970s, we understood why Charo and Charles Ansarati were on because they were celebrities in their own right. And a lot, but a lot of people said about this guy, what has he ever done to be on all these game shows? Well, for me, he was the funniest guy and one of the most jovial guys I ever saw. And uh, the amount of cameos and other things he'd done, a very Renaissance guy and probably, not say openly gay, but one of the biggest gay icons in the 1970s because we all knew he was gay. And he was all unapologetic for his personality. Of course, we're going to be talking about the great Rip Taylor. Now, born Charles Elmer Rip Taylor Jr., he was an American actor and comedian known for his exuberance and flamboyant personality, including his wild mustache, his million-dollar toupee, and his habit of showering himself and others with confetti. If you haven't seen this before, ladies and gentlemen, you have to you have to look at it. It's amazing. The Hollywood Reporter uh, praised him, calling him a television and nightclub mainstay for more than six decades, who made thousands of nightclub and television appearances. Now, he was born in Washington on January 1331, the son of Elizabeth Sue Evans, a waitress and a former government clerk, and Charles Elmer Taylor, a musician who passed away two years after he was born. Again, as described in his 2010 one-man show with Anal Confetti, Taylor had a tough childhood, which included being molested while in foster care and having to deal with bullies in school because of his sexuality. As a teenager, he attended Capitol Page School, and he also worked as a congressional page before serving the Korean War, and it was the U.S. Army Single Corps. Although assigned to the Corps, he was sent to Special Services, the entertainment wing of the military, similar to what happened to Mel Brooks, where he performed for the troops in Tokyo and Korea. Now, Tyler's career in show business began when he joined the Army, where he started performing stand-up in clubs and restaurants, while also performing for the troops. After his military service ended and back in the States, he focused on a nightclub career. His mainstay material was pantomiming records, and his favorites were Yiddish, Yiddish folk songs and Spike Jones tunes. He said that it ended one day when a record player broke. I haven't shut up since, he noted. In the mid-1950s, he worked the strip clubs all along the eastern coast of the States. Although much of his material, including jokes stolen from Max, he saw in USO shows, his first signature piece would be to pretend to cry while begging the audience for laughs. He found he could get a bigger response that way. His booking started to get more upscale, and he played all over Miami Beach, Florida, uh, which had become a winter destination for the wealthy, including many prominent Jews and, of course, gamblers, which it's a story I can tell you, but I'm not allowed to. Taylor was also a mainstay in the summer playground of the wealthy in the Catskills Mafia. <laughs> a booking agent from the Ed Sullivan Show attended his show one night. Taylor would spend a week's salary on champagne to get the audience boisterous, and he first appeared on the show in 61 and made about 20 appearances. Sullivan would often forget his name, saying, get me the crying comedian, even though he made the fans totally laugh. Now, in addition to the Ed Sullivan Show, he appeared on the Jackie Gleason Show in several guest appearances during the 64 season as the crying comedian. Now, Taylor's signature confetti toss gag came from an appearance in the 1960s The Merv Griffin Show, where he was bombing as a stand-up. I did props, and I was the prop comedian. I was dying like hell on Merv. The jokes were dumb, and I tore the 5 by 8 cards, threw them up in the air, and it became confetti, he recalled. I knocked over the desk, walked up the aisle, went to Stardis and sell, said, well, that's the end of my TV career. I went home that night, and the switchboard lit up. They said... Get that guy that went crazy. Now, he was considered the original wild and crazy guys, and I'm not telling tales out of school. Allegedly, Steve Martin stole the wild and crazy moniker from a media report on Rip for his own stand-up. You know, uh, <laughs> stealing is the best form of flattery to amongst comedians. When he became a fixture in Las Vegas, he was the opener for Eleanor Powell's Dance Focus Review and would go on to warm up audience, audiences for Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, Ann Margaret, Debbie Reynolds, Frankie Lane, Julie Garland, and, of all people, the Kingston uh, Trio. Now, in the 70s, he won a Las Vegas Entertainer of the Year three times. So Rip is becoming more and more uh, popular, and as it goes along, TV takes it takes notice. He appeared in two 68 episodes of The Monkees and had a very noted cameo in her 69 special, which unfortunately bombed, called 33 and the Third Revolutions Per Monkey. He continued to work as a voice performer in the 1970s cartoon series Here Comes the Grump, 
as a title character and in the second edition of the Adams Family cartoon series in 92 when he was the voice of Uncle Fester. Now, throughout the 70s, where he became the biggest acclaim and probably a top five uh, game show visitor of the decade, he was a frequent celebrity guest panelist on Hollywood Squares, Break the Bank, To Tell the Truth, and The Gog Show. And he also substituted for Charles Nelson Roddy on Match Game when Charles was busy with his uh, stage work. He became a regular on City Marty Crafts, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, playing Sheldon, a sea genie who lived in a conch cell. In addition, Taylor was also a regular on the Brady Bunch Hour, playing the role of neighbor performer Jack Merrill. He also hosted a short-lived stand-up beauty pageant title, the 198 Beauty Show. And if you can see this on YouTube, it's, it's a very meta show. This was created by Chuck Bears, who was producer host of The Gong Show. Now, this appeared in 1978. He was also a celebrity on a 1990 version of Match Game. In 79, he was the voice of CJ from the Hanna-Barbera TV movie, Scooby Goes Hollywood. Other appearances all included The Kids in the Hall, referred to as Uncle Rip by Buddy Cole, uh, the show's bone flamboyant gay character. So the inside joke in Canada, we all knew he was gay. I wasn't surprised that Buddy would invite him. He also appeared himself in the movies Wayne's World 2 in a hilarious cameo as one of the special guests invited to Waynestock after uh, Mike uh, Myers' alter ego was visited a dream by a fake Jim Morrison. Taylor also made dozens of mayhem full appearances on both The Tonight Show and The Mike Douglas Show. In 1990, he voiced a genie in DuckTales, the movie Treasure of the Lost Lamp, and Taylor appeared uncredited uh, as well on a 94 edition of WWF Monday Night Raw. He assisted another wrestler, and he pushed Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Now, in 97, he appeared in a segment of the show Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. He played the role of Elmo Middleton in the segment The Man in the Model T. Also in 97, he appeared as himself in a sitcom Brotherly Love in the episode Easy Come, Easy Go. He also portrayed Chief Undersecretary Wardle in a, gra- a, graphical, a graphical adventure game, Zork, Grand Inquisitor in 97. 2003, he appeared as himself in Will and Grace, and he also appeared as himself as an episode, on an episode of George Lopez. Now, Taylor also guest starred as Chief Rap and Rip in four, Chef Rap and Rip in four episodes of Life with Body. He also guest stars in The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody in the episode Loosely Ballroom as Leo. He's also in some episodes of The Emperor's New School as the voice of the Royal Record Keeper. He was also in the Jetix animated series Super Robot Monkey, Team Hyperfers Go. He also made a special guest appearance at the end of the Towson episode of GH Video Game Review Show X-Play and a guest appearance on a 2012 episode of the Aquabat Super Show where he played a genie reminiscent of his character on Sigmund and the Sea monsters now there was some rumor he was going to show up at star trek as a certain uh, character related to a klingon but it never uh, played out now in 95 he performed the intro for the bloodhound gang's use your fingers album in the early 2000s johnny knoxville asked taylor to be in the film jackass the movie and in the final scene he wielded a pistol that when fired released a sign that read the end he did the same thing at the end of jackass number two and jackass 3d in the credits of the 2005 remake of the Dukes of Harris Hazard, Taylor shows up in the blooper reel. Now, he also made occasional appearances in movies, usually broad comedies like The Happy Hooker Goes to Washington and the R-rated Deep Throw parody Chatterbox. In Cheech and Chong, Things Are Tough All Over, which has to be seen to be believed, he picks them up in the middle of nowhere, driving a convertible full of props, which causes, of course, Chong to break out in laughter tears. He then proceeds to drive to Vegas and told such bad jokes the whole way and again to move Chong to tears from laughter and later tears because he wouldn't stop. Uh, one of the best lines in a movie, of course. Now, uh, in Amazon Women on the Moon, the sequel to uh, Kentucky Fried Movie, a funeral service turns a celebrity rose when Taylor shows up to honor the deceased. In 92, he votes Captain Kitty and Tommy, Tom and Jerry the movie and he also appeared to Wayne Worlds too. In 93, a decent report. Repo- on the dramatic side, he appeared in a decent proposal as Demi Moore's boss, Mr. Langford, uh, uh, has to be seen to be believed. A lot of people thought that uh, kind of ruined the movie for a lot of people. Even the movie had enough to ruin itself in the first place. Now, on live theater, that's where he started. He had the Borscht Belt reputation. 
His first big live show was in 66 when he went on a tour with Judy Garland and Eleanor Powell in Vegas. In 81, Taylor appeared on Broadway when he replaced Mickey Rooney in the burlesque theme musical comedy Sugar Babies, which was kind of controversial because Rooney said in published reports he wasn't fired, but he wanted something, something more funny than he was. He was a frequent co-star with Debbie Reynolds in her live shows in Vegas, Reno, Nevada, and Lake Tahoe. He also performed frequently in Atlantic City as well. In 2010, he appeared in a one-man show when Ain't All Confetti in North Hollywood, where he shared personal stories about his life and career. Now, the big controversy where members of the gay community were trying to permanently out him uh, from the late 1980s to his death. Now, in 2005, he did appear as the Grand Marshal of the Washington, D.C. Capitol Pride Parade. Now, when Taylor was referred to as openly gay in a 2009 interview for Ask the Flying Monkey, Brent Harringer recalled receiving an email from Taylor stating, you don't me well en- know me well enough to summarize I am openly gay. I don't know you are not an open heroin user. You see how that works? Think before you write. Taylor was married for a number of years to Las Vegas showgirl Rusty Rowe, whom he divorced in the early 1960s. We're not sure if that was a beard or not. Now, he was a close friend of entertainer Liberace, and Taylor cut the ribbon at the Vegas estate auction of Liberace's belongings and personal effects in 88. According to his publicist, at the time of Taylor's death, he was in a long-term relationship with, her hus- with his husband, Robert Fortney. Now, he died on October 6, 2019, at Cedar sinai Medical Center in L.A., having been hospitalized, forget this, an epileptic seizure the week prior. His death certificate listed heart failure as a contributing cause. While Taylor often gave his birth the year as 35, his death certificate and census records confirm he was born in 1931. His ashes were scattered eventually at sea in Hawaii. Now, to my knowledge, and maybe somebody get back to that, I don't know if he has a star in the Hollywood Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame, but the uh, the Emmy Committee or... Uh, there must be some recognition for voice actors. As good as Rip Taylor was as a comedian, he was also a tremendous voice actor. And the only comparison I can make uh, to him, a similar comedian, it's no one that Howie Mandel, who is, uh, you know, Canada's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, doing all the Staples commercials. Very good voice actor. Uh, you know, Bobby's World and all that. When Rip Taylor used to come on the talk shows, the energy to positivity would rise. Now, why was he so well-liked? Well, Charleston L. Nelson Riley was well-liked, but not as much as Rip Taylor. Because Rip Taylor is like, a, is like an uncle at a party, you know he's gay, and he goes to a wedding where the wedding is dumb. And he goes from table to table, and he dances maybe with a 97-year-old woman, or he, try, he asks the, the groom to limbo with him, and there the groom and Rip Taylor or the character are limboing on the stage. He always wanted to see everybody happy. Now, I saw him do interviews in Canada when he was very serious. He said, uh, my fans are everything to me. He said, I show up to the celebrity events. I go on the talk shows and I go into game shows and I feel at home. And when he died, there's been a vacuum since he died the last four years. Sir, I know it's a weird comparison. When Rodney died, I've always been a big fan of Rodney Dangerville. But Rodney, Rodney died, it was a big void. In that genre, genre, so is like with Henny Youngman, Sam Kinison, really that type of comedian, he was one of the last, where like Paul Lynn was kind of, you know, grumpy and unhappy. I didn't see Rip Taylor, anything he did was a nothing but positive. So take it as you will. So that's the story of Rip Taylor, probably, if not one of the most underrated entertainers of his era, one of the most, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, beloved that you don't know you miss Rip Taylor until you think of him. So if you have any memories of Rip Taylor, if you saw him in person or on the game shows, please leave a, a comment, a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, we're only five steps away from Hollywood, and Rip Taylor took those steps for us. Thanks for listening. Bye.